what's going on guys, Daniel from ModBot here, and if I sound a little kind of out of it, bear with me. Um, I hurt myself like a week and a half ago, I just, I moved weirdly and I pinched a nerve in my back and it seemed like it was getting better, but then yesterday I was out and I nearly collapsed uh, from the pain that shot from my back to my ribs, so I've been in bed the last 40-ish hours, Not maybe not quite that long, but um, I wanted to bring you guys this video yesterday, but today I finally can at least get up. But I'm still in quite a lot of pain, but I, again, wanted to bring you guys this video. So, in this video we're going to be taking a look at basically the final, uh, final TiVo Tarantula. Um, I still am super unhappy with the um, cable management situation I got going on, but I'll address that more so in the final review, which will be coming up probably in the next... 48 hours I would say after this video gets uploaded but in this video we're going to take a look at the upgrades that I made to this machine and most of the upgrades are more for the user and not actually to affect the print quality except for one that substantially affected print quality so these will be in no particular order but let's go ahead and get started so as you can see at the very top we have these little green clamps for the LCD screen and I think that's almost a must for this printer um, by default, this printer doesn't actually mount to anything. This LCD screen is just loose, and I mean, I guess that's cool if that's something that you like, but for me, I don't need, that's just something that's going to fall off and break, or just, I don't know, it's not, I don't like it loose at all. So, that was the first thing I upgraded. It's really nice. Um, they added the ability to add screws if you want to lock it into place, but the tolerance is so tight on this thing that you actually don't need any additional hardware. Uh, you just undo the long LCD screws and it attaches to that and then it snaps right into place and this thing is this thing's awesome. Um, so I strongly recommend this upgrade. All these different upgrades will be in the description so that way you can just click on the links and it'll take you there um, if you want to print one for yourself. And then I'll also place a link to this actual printer in the description uh, of the video as well. So. So that was the first upgrade I did. And the second upgrade I did, which again, I'll try to get a couple different camera shots here once I'm done recording this, is these little bed leveling screw um, attachments right there. Uh, the bed leveling thumb adjust adjustments that this machine comes with um, kind of suck. They're really hard to turn some of them. They hurt my thumb. So um, this was a really simple print that you just print out four of them. They snap into place. And that way you can adjust the bed much easier um, without any um, kind of pain on your fingers from doing so. So that was a really, really nice and simple, simple upgrade. So then the next thing I did was I was really unhappy with the cable situation on this machine, which again, I still am very unhappy with the way all the cables are right in the front. The uh, Seriously, the only thing I could think of is to actually cut and solder all these cables shorter so that way there's not all that slack in the front but it's that's such a pain to do and because I build so many printers I don't know that I feel like doing that with this I've done it in the past with other printers but I really don't know that I've got the patience right now to go through and shorten each cable one by one it's just really tedious it's not enjoyable but anyways I digress um, I moved on and went ahead and printed out these uh, drag chain cables which feed the extruder cables through along with the bed cables through. Hopefully you guys can see there's actually one back there that connects to the bed. Um, so I went ahead and printed out those and I also printed out one for the Z-axis um, but I was having issues trying to figure out what cable I even wanted to feed through here. The only one I could think of was like the motor cable um, which was too short. It was pulling on it so I ended up opting to not do the Z axes and I just did the X which again is a lot cleaner um, and it looks kind of cool too I suppose it, it kind of looks official my buddy says it reminds him of like CNC machines I guess he's seen CNC machines that use this kind of cable drag chains but yeah that was really nice so I fed all that through there um, I ended up having to put a little zip tie to connect the the drag chain to its actual main base attachment right there uh, it just kept popping off and again I don't know if that was like a print thing or maybe I printed the layers too high I think I printed the chains at point two layer height maybe I should have done even thinner but by applying a tiny little zip tie that fixed that issue and you know it's good to go so we've got that I also had to print out this little corner bracket right here because when the machine goes up if I hadn't printed this then this little unit that attaches to this chain would hit it. So you have to replace that as well. So it was quite a lot of printing. Um, 
But again, I think it looks nice. It looks a lot nicer than it did before. And um, then obviously, as you can see here, I added LEDs because a printer, to me, is only as cool as the LEDs it has on it. No, I, I just, I'm such a sucker for LEDs. I love them. Um, so I added just a switch. It's actually my last switch, so I'll have to order some more. I've been installing LEDs in every machine, every machine I ever got, excuse me. Um, I actually ran into a issue uh, with my LEDs, which was driving me crazy, and then I figured out the solution. It was something so basic, but so I put the LEDs on, like I tested them to make sure that they were good to go, and all of a sudden the LEDs were blinking, like strobe light blinking, and I'm like, what the hell? There's no way that this thing's not powering it enough. So I tried checking my my cable, like my soldering, to see whether that was the issue. It didn't seem to be the issue. So then I was like, okay, maybe these LEDs are defective. So I removed the LEDs, I put on a new thing of LEDs, re-soldered them, plugged it all in, everything's working great. Then I go to heat up the extruder on this machine and strobe light, strobe light, strobe light, and I'm like, what the hell? Like maybe my power supply is defective. Well, so I'm down there and I'm undoing the cables on the power supply and I start thinking to myself, I'm like, I wonder if this machine's set to 220 or 110 because these, um, again, you can't see on the floor, but these standard uh, 3D printer power supplies have the option to be used in Europe or USA and um, my mine specifically came with a European plug that I had to cut and turn into a USA plug and sure as shit when I checked it it was set to 220 not 110 so I flipped the switch and like magic everything was you know working it powered up perfectly fine the LEDs worked great so that was annoying because that was like an hour of troubleshooting or an hour and a half of troubleshooting and the solution of course was something so basic that you know it was so basic that I didn't over I didn't look at it because it was too basic it's something I've never really had to deal with before so either anywho if you've got issues with your power make sure your power supply switch is set to your you know local standard so I did that and the last thing I did which is the biggest upgrade that I think you should definitely do is I printed out this little, there's a little attachment down here that just goes onto the stock heat sink. It's just basically a fan shroud. Um, is that the right word? Fan shroud? Fan blower attachment? I don't know. We'll call it fan shroud blower attachment. We'll get all of them in there. Um, it attaches to the heat sink with two M3 screws. And then I attached this fan that I picked up off of Amazon and wired it through here into the board because I primarily print with PLA and the difference in quality I got was pretty substantial and I'll show you guys right now, I'll also take some pictures so you can kind of see a close up but um, this part, this particular part that you have to print uh, a little bit of advice is if you print it at 100% which is like you know how it normally comes in downloaded off Thingiverse it's kind of too tight and when I put the fan into it it snapped the original part so I saw somebody in the comments that said, hey, print it at 105. That worked out well for me. So I printed it at 105, which is, you know, 5% scale. And it was a little bit too loose now. So then what I ended up doing is I actually took some of this I'm freaking epoxy that I, I just always have epoxy on hand. And I put a little bit of that and let it dry overnight. And now it's in there. I mean, it's, it's solid. It's not going anywhere. So... Um, maybe try it at like 102.5, somewhere in the middle. Maybe that would be the sweet spot if you're going to print that out. But um, regardless, let me see if I can figure out which of these benches I printed. Hopefully you guys will be able to see this. And again, if not, I'll get some photos. But this was a benchy that I printed without the PLA cooling fan. Let me see if I can get it to zoom in a little bit better on it so you guys can kind of see the lines and stuff. Okay. There's a lot of stuff going on right here. A ton. Like it's not so great at all. And this is the one that I printed with the cooling fan. That little chunk on the bottom was my fault. There was a little bit of plastic left on the nozzle. But if you look at the difference between that one with the fan and the one without the fan, it's huge. There's no excuse as to why you should not add a fan to this printer for six bucks if your quality is going to be that much better. So I think for the final review, I'm going to print out another one of those monsters probably that I printed out, the little pencil holder guys and compare it, because um, this is a big print. I think I have enough plastic, I hope I do. Um, so that way we can compare this guy, which again, turned out pretty solid, but has some serious under extrusion and just line issue as well, to the final one, which again has an added fan and I tweaked the, um, the filament, I calibrated the filament along with the tension on the extruder, which seems to have made a huge difference. So 
Once again, this is the TiVo Tarantula upgraded um, with mostly stuff for me. Again, the cables, the bed leveling, the LEDs, the, the mounts. But the big difference for the print quality is that extra cooling fan for that first layer, which really, really makes a night and day difference. So, hope you guys enjoyed this video. Once again, if you have any questions, leave a comment down below. Links will be in the description to any and all the things I talked about in this video. And I hope you guys are all doing fantastic and um, be looking forward for that TiVo Tarantula full review coming out in the next day or two here. All right. Once again, this has been Daniel from ModBot and I will see you guys later. Peace, guys.